All right. So, another concept that is important is the following. Let's say we have our turn by document matrix representing a collection of four documents. Document one is the cow jumped over the moon. Document two is O'Leary's cow kicked a lamp. Document three is the kicked lamp started a fire. And document four is the cow on fire. Now, we look at our matrix of a document by term matrix here, and we see that if we do cosine similarity, it's an exercise for you guys to um, look at the previous video and see if you can compute the similarity between the different documents. But if we do cosine similarity, at one point, we're going to be multiplying the frequencies of each word, say, for example, similarity between D1 and D4, we're going to be multiplying these frequencies of words, right? We're going to be multiplying those. So <clears throat> it is interesting to notice that that similarity is going to be big if these numbers that you're multiplying are big, okay? So because remember the similarity, the cosine similarity in the numerator had the dot product, meaning the multiplication and addition of each one of these words of, of the over overlapping words. So it'll have, for example, uh, the first word of the of document one times the first word of document two plus x2 times y2 and so on and so forth, right? That's the numerator of the cosine similarity. It's the dot product. Now, here's what happens with that. Here's, the, here's the, the problem here. Is that if this word, if this frequency is super big, and this frequency is super big, that multiplication is going to be very big, and it might skew our similarity score in the wrong way. What do I mean by that? Well, the word the is the most common word in English, right? So, oops. The word there is the most common word in English. So if a document has the word the many, 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 many times, the word the might be the indicator of similarity. And honestly, the word the doesn't mean anything. It doesn't tell you what the documents are about. Words like jumped, moon, cow, or leeries, those are words that tell you what the, what the documents are about, but not the word the, right? However, the word the will have a high frequency. So how do we eliminate that problem? Well, one way is to look at the list of words that, co that commonly occur in English and just erase them from the document. But you might be losing some information. Another way is to uh, change these weights according to some sort of analysis of the documents and, and the text that you have. So. Welcome to term weighing. So we have, uh, we're going to introduce a concept called TFIDF, okay? And we're going to get there. But the intuitions here is that some words are less important than others. So for example, the word the is less important than the word fire in our set of documents. Also, simple frequency might not be the best score for a word, again, because it gives, it, you might have a lot of frequency for low importance words. So our intuition is that important. Now, here's, here's a couple of intuitions. If a word is important in a document, it will occur often. So not just once in the document, but it, in long documents I'm talking about. An important word might occur several times in one document. Uh, however, uh, uh, oh, and common words will usually appear in a lot of documents. So the word the is likely to appear in most documents that you have, but the word fire might not, right? So also important words might not appear in all documents, but only in the documents that talk about that. So with those intuitions, we can talk about the term frequency by inverse document frequency or TFIDF. So the term frequency, I'm going to call it TF, term frequency, IJ, so the term frequency of word I in document J is how many times the word I occurs in document J. So for example, here the term frequency of the word the in document one is two, okay? Uh, I'm also going to say the document frequency, DI, is how many documents contained word I. So for example, the document frequency here 
of the word the is one, two, three, four. It occurs in four documents. That's the document's frequency of the word the. And the intuition is basically this, is you will have the term frequency, whoops, you will have the term frequency divided by the document frequency, which means if a word occurs in a lot of documents, in many, many, many documents, this fraction is going to be small. If it occurs in very few documents, then the term frequency is going to tell you whether that word is important or not. Now, because when we work with lar large corpora, these numbers get out of hand, we can dampen the weights to use uh, logarithm and base 2, by the way. This is always logarithm and base 2. And we're going to say that the weight or this um, this TFIDF weight or this TFIDF number is going to be 1 plus the logarithm of the frequency of that word in that document times the logarithm of the total number of documents divided by the document frequency of said word. Let's, let's look at one example. <clears throat> Say, for example, we have the following documents. It's the same four documents that we had before. This is the term document matrix. So let's look at the TFIDF value of the word the. This is a very common word. It appears in some documents more than others, but it appears in all documents. So the TFIDF of this will be one, whoops, will be one plus, I'm just copying the formula from uh, the previous slide. One plus the logarithm in base two of the term frequency for document one, that's two and the word the, times the logarithm in base two of n, which is the number of documents, 4, divided by the number of documents in which the word the occurs, which is also 4. Now, it's interesting to notice, this here is 1. 4 divided by 4 is 1, and the logarithm of 1 is 0. So the TFIDF for the word the is going to be 0, meaning the word the will have 0 importance. It's not an important word. Conversely, let's try to, let's try to do the the um, TFIDF of the word O'Leary's, okay, is 1 plus the logarithm in base 2 of the term frequency, this time in document 2, okay. In document 2, it's going to be, it occurs once, right, times the logarithm in base 2 of n, which is the number of documents, 4, divided by the number of documents in which O'Leary occurs, which is 1. Well, so here we have the logarithm, this guy, logarithm of 1 goes to 0, and then logarithm of, in base 2 of 4 divided by, divided by 1 will be 2. Okay, so then we have 1 times 2, that's 2, meaning the TFIDF of O'Leary is bigger than other TFIDFs, right? It's bigger than, than that quotient. It's not just 1. It's two because documents containing O'Leary's are very likely to be talking about the same thing, more so than documents containing the word the. So we can see if we do the analysis of the TFIDF words in, for all documents, for all the words that appear in those documents, we get the following values here, right? We get the following weights. And we can see that words like the that appear in all documents turn up to be TFIDF of zero, so we don't care about those. And words like cow that in this case in this case appear in most documents but not all have some weight but not great and words that appear only once in one document have a lot of weight words like kicked that appear in like half the documents have less weight it turns out to be the same the computations are the same but you can see that words that appear only once get more important uh, are more important than others now, the word a and on are not very important, but in my documents, I only have them once or twice. Oh, this is wrong. This should be a two. But, uh, but in, in, in general, these words tend to appear in documents a lot and their TFIDFs are going to go down. And words that appear very little, but very frequently in one document will turn to go up. And then these weights will be much more representative. These weights will be much more representative of the actual values and you can do a cosine similarity that will turn uh, much more accurate than if you were just using plain frequencies. I hope you like this video and I hope you've understood TFIDF.